Hello explorers and welcome to another video and today we are going to talk about Ceph, the S3 API in Ceph and PHP. I wanted to start using Ceph object storage at my work and I wanted to actually integrate it into one of our applications that was written in PHP. So I looked online and I found the Amazon S3 API SDK. I downloaded that using Composer and it was 2000 files and uh, over 1500 directories and about 26 megabytes. And it contained all different services that Amazon could give you or that you could use at Amazon. So that it has a lot in that library. So if you need any service at Amazon, that is a really good package to download and run in PHP. But for my use case, where I just wanted to connect to a Ceph cluster and store a bunch of S3 objects, I wanted something a little bit less <laughs> weighty. So I looked into the actual REST API and figured out how it actually works and it wasn't that complicated. So that's what we're going to go through today. So let's switch over to my screen here. And if you want to follow along, this repository is in the description below. So you can click up that, that up and look at the code and follow along. So here we have the configuration file. Uh, and all these values are required to store an S3 bucket. You need the access key, the secret key, the host, the port, and the bucket. Nothing strange there. If we go to our Ceph cluster here, we see that we have a test user. If I edit that test user, we see that we have a bunch of S3 keys here. We can show those keys. And here we have the keys that I'm using. Um, you could also take this user and click it up here, go to the keys tab, click the keys and show and you have the same information here and can copy it off. So that is how you get your Ceph keys. If we go on to daemons here, then you can go in here and find out the actual beast endpoint. So this is the beast endpoint. So here we have the host and the port. It's not that hard to actually find this information in here. If you have multiple uh, hosts, then you need to set up a load balancer over your um, host so you can actually go into all the endpoints uh, in a good way. And every call that you do to an S3 bucket is automatic. You don't need any login and you just need to sit, sign every call. And then when you look at buckets, I have this test bucket. So I just use that name. So now we have fetched all the information we want or we need and we put them into this configuration file. If we look at this test S3 PHP, which is also available in um, this repository, we see here that we have require the config file, require the actual client. We set up a new S3 client with all the different parameters that we had in our config file. Then I run the function exist to see if this path Test, test data is available here. It should probably give false because I haven't written anything yet. Then I put some data and I put hello world. Then I have test data again here. And then I get data, test data. And you see that all the prompts here. Then I delete the data and I check exist again. So if I run this, we should get the expected result that it doesn't exist. We put some data. It exists, we get the data back, we delete the data and it doesn't exist anymore. So this is a, perhaps a little bit complicated to actually show it off, but it will return true or false for all the uh, different things that doesn't put, uh, doesn't get any data. All the other ones we get true if it's working and false if it's not working. So let's look at the actual client here. And uh, these are the functions we, return the data here, we run this make call on the get function with the remote path and we get a response back. When we put data, we make a call to the put function with the remote data and data and we get the response back 
uh, false. If it exists, we do a head call, and if it's not false, then it, it exists. And delete, we do run the delete call, and if it's not false, then it's a valid call as well. And the constructor will set all these private variables, so it's pretty much just moving them into the class we can use them. So now the meat of the matter, the make call. And it's not that long. It's just around 22 lines. So the first line here is that we need to create a date with this standard um, RFC 2822 format. So we have a date here. Uh, then we need some um, param some of the different header parameters that is uh, required for S3. The first one here, ACL, says that it should be private, this object. So no one else should be able to read this object if they are not logged in as the specific user we are logged in as now. This could be public, it could be read only, and, and a couple of other things here. Then I have this storage class, standard, and this is pretty much how much it should be replicated. I'm not sure if Ceph actually will change anything if you change this value. I think it will give you three copies of everything if you have a standard Ceph cluster. So I don't think the storage class actually do anything, but it is uh, something that they say that you should put in. So now we have the two I think major things in uh, Amazon API, or the headers that you need. Then we need to sign this request that we're gonna do. So I will t create this send string, which is what I want to sign. First off, we put in a method, and you see that everything is doing this um, line feed here. So we need to put a line feed in between every parameter. So first the method, which should be put or get or so on. And then here we could put in a content MD5. So taking the content that we want to send and making an MD5 sum of this and put it in. But it's optional and it's a little bit more work than I actually want to do. So I just skipped it. Content type here, I have used uh, Oct Steam. So I just send bytes over. Could set it to something else if you want, but it's also optional. So it's not required. Then we put the date. Then we need to put these uh, parameters or these headers up here in alphabetical order. But as we create the string, it's very easy to put ACL first and then storage type. And then comes the path that we actually want to save. So it, we start with a slash, then we have the bucket name, and then we have the remote path. And the remote path needs to start with a slash as well, or else it will be a part of the bucket. So that's not any good. But as you saw in our test example here, I start with a slash. So if you are using, let's say, file paths that you then put into um, S3, you can continue using those file paths as long as they start with a slash. So that's a good benefit, I think, to actually keep that. You could, of course, add the, the, the slash here if you wanted to make, make it more robust for some reason. Um, and then we have this signature function here, and it's pretty much making an hash uh, HMAC with SHA-1, so an older uh, function here, uh, an older cryptographic function, but it should be fine for this uh, thing. And then we have this send string and we have our secret key. And this boolean over here, true, is important because if we don't do that, we will get hex back. And we want, don't want a signature in hex, we want a signature in base64 encoding. So this true here gives us the binary result back, then we base64 encode that binary and get the signature. So this signature down here, that is what we will put into our authorization um, header down here. Then we have this stream context that we want to create in order to uh, do the actual call. Uh, so set up a bunch of parameters. So we run HTTP for this stream context. We set the method, this get put or so on, and a bunch of headers. So one header we will set is the host name. 
In this case, it was an IP address, but you can use a host name there. Then we have the date. Um, and then we have the content type. So the, this needs to be the same as we had up here. The same goes for date. And then we have the storage type. And then we have the ACL. You could switch these around. It doesn't really matter as long as you keep them in alphabetical order up here. And then we have the authorization header and it should start with AVS. Then you should put the access key and then you should put a colon and then the signature. And then I have put the content to post data and post data could be the empty string for all other um, calls except for the actual put command where we put some data there. And last but not least, we run uh, return get file, uh, file get contents with an at sign in the beginning. So it will not throw any exceptions if we get a 404 or something like that. It will just return false uh, if it's not correct. And then we will go to HTTP. We could of course add this protocol if we want to make this secure and run over HTTPS. And uh, then we have the host, then we have the port after a colon, slash this bucket, remote path. Um, and then we put in the context here. Uh, this false, uh, I don't remember. This false parameter here is get include pa uh, get include path, whatever that is, but it's defaulting to false. So I'm just setting it here in order to put the context in. So that was everything you needed to make a call to your S3 bucket, store some data, get some data, check if data is there, delete the data again. So it's a very simple API to actually use if you only want to use the data storage part. Of course, you can make this more, much more complicated and using streaming APIs and so on in order to make it even more useful for larger files and so on. But this is a base thing for storing data in an S3 bucket. And you don't need all those 26 megabytes of APIs um, in order to do this simple thing. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues, and I really hope to see you in the next video.